In the Getting Started segment, I talked a little bit about growing your candidate list in front of you. What exactly was I talking about? Well, it's a simple activity to write down a list of names, but it is in fact a skill to learn to so live our lives so that our candidate list grows in front of us. I'd like to share with you a life experience of mine. A number of years ago, I was playing golf with a dear friend, and along about the 14th hole, he said, you know what, Randy, I'm concerned about getting too close to you. I said, what do you mean? He said, the way that you talk about others when you're playing golf with me makes me wonder how you might talk about me when you're playing golf with others. All I hear you doing is complaining and, and making negative references to others. You see, he could see in me something that I could not see in myself. He could see negativity. I was raised in an environment that was sometimes negative and that resulted in me becoming negative most of the time. Tobe said, Randy, that is something in you that will need to change if you want to have a dramatic success in your life. Not just financial success, but a dramatic success in your life. You want to be surrounded by friends. Learn to stop being critical. Well, he could see in me something that I couldn't see in myself and I set out on a mission at that point in time to eradicate that from my personality and from my character. It was hard, not easy. He gave me another suggestion. He referred me to a book, and, and in that book, I was taught to look for the good in other people instead of looking for the negative. Once again, changing behaviors, hard, not easy, but I was taught to watch people, observe people constantly throughout my day, see them doing something great, and then tell them how great they are. That was unusual, abnormal, changed behavior for me, but I began to do it and how my worldview changed. When instead of watching for people doing something wrong and complaining to them and others about it, when instead of that I started watching for people doing something really, really great and telling them how great they were, everything slowly started to change. I stopped being negative and I think I can say today that I'm among the more positive people. It changed because I started looking for the good in others instead of looking for the negative in others. And then I gradually learned how to transition that into positive business outcomes. I'll give you a quick example. I used to shop for things. Today I never shop for things. I buy things, but I shop for people. If today I were to go looking for a new suit, I have a pretty good idea of what I would buy. It would be not so different from this. If I were to go buy a new suit, and I know the brands that I might buy. I might buy Brioni, or I might buy Versace, I might buy Calvin Klein, I might buy Hugo Boss, and I also know the shops where those brands are sold. If today I were to buy a new suit, I would go to each of those shops, not just one, and I would wait for the one person who provided exceptional service, the one who was great. And when I found that one, that is the person with whom I would make a transaction. And when I did so, I would tell him or her, wow, you're great. I've been to every men's shop in town looking for something similar to this, and the reason I bought it from you is because you are great. Thank you for your service. Now, I believe that most people go through their day and don't hear that kind of a compliment. And I believe, in fact, I know, having lived it for some period of time, that that cements me in that person's mind. Now, if at that moment in time I was to likewise tell them I had opportunity for them, it would all fall flat because it would then, it would take away the validity of that compliment. But when at some later date I revisit the discussion and I stop back in or I make a phone call or I send a text and I say, I've reflected upon our experience a month or so ago several times. I've reflected upon the extraordinary service you provided to me and how well developed your skills are. I think there's a chance that I could, together with you, show you how to re-employ those skills to a higher and greater outcome. Would you be interested in learning how? Now you see that simple activity of watching people and observing those who are great, learning how to compliment and affirm, that simple behavior has caused my candidate list to grow, always in front of me. It's never run out. That extends over my entire life, not the one simple example of buying a new suit. It runs throughout my life. And I again caution that um, the idea of making that compliment, that affirmation, and then tying it immediately to a business message invalidates all. And so this is a process. A person that I interact with today, I may not introduce to my business for two months, three months, or four. Certainly there are multiple other ways to grow our candidate list. Another quick one that I like, a number of years ago I, I moved to uh, Salt Lake City, and when I moved there, I wanted to build a business, and, and I had no circle of influence there. And I thought, well, I can do this the hard way. The hard way would be to cold call. The hard way would be all these, I could do paper clicks and all that thing would be tough. Or I could just do things that I like to do. And what's an example of that? Well, I could, as it works out, I love bowling. And I'm probably no good anymore because I haven't done it for a long time, but I once wasn't so bad. And what I learned was that I could join a men's scratch bowling league and I could go bowl. I could just go do what I want to do. And three months later, I would have a whole new circle of influence. 
Now, if I went to the bowling alley with my pockets bulging full of promotional materials, it would fall flat. Not only would I not make friends, but people would all push me away. That's not what I do. I simply live life. I do what I love to do. By doing things that I love to do, it puts me in association with others who like to do the same things. It creates relationship. And having created relationship, it becomes very easy for me to weave into the conversation this magic message of what CBD is. Every person that I know. In fact, most people that you know, if you know people who have a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter, if they've got a brother or a sister or a mother or a father, if they've got a husband or a wife, what we know is this, we know that somewhere along the way there will be an urgent pressing need, not just an ongoing maintenance need, but an urgent pressing need for CBD. We know that. And as we grow our circle of influence, as we grow our sphere of friends, those moments become more apparent to us because the intimacy we develop and we can then deliver the message. Further, we've talked about the clock dial. If we get close enough in our relationship to people, if we develop friendships, they will confide in us when the hands on the clock dial start to move, and we can then provide a solution to the problem. In its simplest way, I could say that my life and career is about identifying problems and providing correct solutions. The way that we choose to live our lives grants us greater insight into many other people's lives and then makes possible this information delivery. That's the way that we grow a candidate list in front of us. What do you like to do? You know, I love college basketball. A number of years ago, I moved to a new environment. I could do what's hard. I could do cold calling. I could do pay-per-click. Instead, I chose to go to basketball games where I met a bunch of people who loved the same thing that I love. I chose to ride the bus 900 miles, 500 miles to the location of the tournament. I met and got to know very, very well this whole crowd of people. One season later, I had a brand new circle of influence. Whenever I hear somebody say, I don't have anyone to call, I say, well, get out of the cocoon. And don't go do what's hard, go do what's fun. By the way, another part of this message, when you put your unique talents on display, it is attractive to others. I'm sure that I could go and join any bowling league and I could make new friends, but I said a men's scratch league. I was at one time a decent bowler. When, when I am relatively good at one of these activities, that causes other people to be more drawn to me. In each of our cases, we have something at which we're good. I remember an instance a number of years ago, I met a young man um, who had gone to the Juilliard School of Music to learn how to play clarinet. You know how good you've got to be to go to the Juilliard School of Music. And he was trying so hard to get a seat in the symphony in New York and hadn't been able to break through. I mean, gosh, how many people try it? How few can do it? An extraordinary talent. And he was working in a 7-Eleven. Wow, he wasn't having too much success trying to grow a circle of influence in that 7-Eleven. And I, I said, gosh, how about if we put this amazing talent and ability of yours on display? Let's invite a handful of people over for a private show. We invited a handful of people over for a private show, and now, how differently they look at it. They said, this is a person who is among the most gifted. They looked up to him, they admired him. Isn't that different from being the clerk at a convenience store? Same person, but what he was failing to do is put the unique talents that he had worked so hard to refine into skills. Talents given by God, he had worked so hard to refine into skills, and yet they were hidden from view because he didn't have a seat in the symphony. Well, my question to you is, what are your unique talents? What are the things you love to do that for some reason you're not doing now? Let's make this a joy. Let's make all that we do add value to our lives across the board. I do what I love, and because I do what I love, I find friends who love what I love. And then it makes it easy for me to develop close enough relationships to find out when the hands on the clock dial are moving in the wrong direction, to find out when there's a health circumstance somewhere in the family to find out when they would simply like to be a part of a community that is positive and encouraging and uplifting. Growing a candidate list, it's about the way we live our lives.